Welcome to Beyond the Data. I'm Dr. Phoebe Thorpe, and here with me today is Lucy Sullivan, the Executive Director for 1,000 Days. Hi, Lucy. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, Phoebe. It's great to be here. Thank you for having me. Our session today was about maternal, infant, and childhood, early childhood nutrition okay. and about the 1,000-day window of opportunity. What is the 1,000-day window of opportunity, and how did you get involved in it? Yeah, so the 1,000-day window of opportunity um, refers to the time between a woman's pregnancy and a child's second birthday. And the reason we call it the window of opportunity is because it's a real uh, chance to uh, ensure that babies get a strong start to life. Nutrition during that first 1,000 days plays a critical role in ensuring mom and baby health, in ensuring uh, baby's development, uh, that they get a strong start in terms of brain development, and um, setting the foundation for lifelong health. Uh, the thousand day window was actually um, uh, uh, discovered, if you will, uh, by the Lancet um, back in 2008, the British medical journal, The Lancet, that identified this minus nine month to 24 month window uh, and the role, the powerful role that nutrition plays in setting the trajectory for a child's health and a child's development. Uh, and since then, uh, we have taken that, that thousand days term uh, and tried to really uh, bring greater awareness uh, to the importance of nutrition to ensure that every child uh, throughout the world and in the U.S. gets the nutrition, nutrition that they need to thrive. And for me, it was a professional passion uh, and then became a personal passion when I became a mother. Mm, of course, of course. So let's start with the uh, uh, weight gain during pregnancy. Yeah. Very nutrition is very important part of that. What and the amount of weight that women gain during pregnancy is very important. Um, what can healthcare providers uh, do to help women understand uh, the importance of that? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up um, because in, in the U.S., um, many women are entering pregnancy at an unhealthy weight. And it's really important uh, that women uh, start out pregnancy healthy, eating a good diet and obviously managing their, their weight. And once uh, a woman becomes pregnant, uh, it's also incredibly important uh, to ensure that she's gaining the appropriate amount of weight. And this is where uh, the healthcare pro providers do play a, a very critical role mm -hmm. in guiding women in terms of the, the appropriate weight gain, uh, counseling women on nutrition, on the importance of nutrition, uh, and the foods they should be eating. Mm -hmm. um, and in this way, access to uh, affordable, comprehensive healthcare is critically important for women to make sure that they have uh, the opportunity to see uh, doctors during their prenatal visits mm -hmm. and, and be followed up with in terms of uh, are they gaining the appropriate amount of weight. Uh, there's actually a Goldilocks zone, if you will, mm -hmm. um, uh, in terms of weight gain. Mm -hmm. We want to make sure that women are gaining just the, the right amount of weight, not too little and not too much, uh, because it's important for, her, for mom's own health, mm -hmm. but also important for baby's health. The amount of weight that a woman gains during pregnancy, what she eats, her nutritional stores during pregnancy really does have an impact on the developing child and can set the trajectory for that child uh, later on in life what's happening in that nine months mm -hmm. in pregnancy yes. and then in the mm -hmm. first few years of life uh, really do impact um, a child's, for example, predisposition to certain kinds of chronic diseases like diabetes and heart disease. Mm -hmm. And there's some interesting research showing that the quality of nutrition during that thousand day window oh. Uh, and the amount of weight a woman gains mm -hmm. as part of that uh, really does have this, this lifelong oh, impact. In so there's also plenty of research about the importance of breastfeeding and the benefits yes. of breastfeeding. Not, and it's not just, the research is not just about what for the baby, but it's for the mom both. What can we do to help support breastfeeding uh, more? Yeah, I'm so glad you brought that up, Phoebe, and, and you're absolutely right. Uh, breastfeeding is just as important for mom as it is for baby. Uh, in moms, it helps reduce the risk of breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and high blood pressure. Mm -hmm. And so we want to make sure that moms uh, have the support that they need to uh, get breastfeeding started. Uh, so that means uh, really skilled lactation support in the hospitals, mm -hmm. making sure that hospitals and, and, and maternity care facilities are breastfeeding friendly. Uh, and then that means when she goes home with the baby uh, that she then has the support that she needs mm -hmm. uh, from her partner, from her community, certainly from her workplace uh, to continue breastfeeding. Uh, one of the challenges and one of the big barriers that women have in this country uh, is that there is not a national paid parental leave 
leave policy that covers all workers. Mm -hmm. And so you have one in four women going back to work within two weeks of giving birth. And it's very challenging for moms to continue to breastfeed um, in accordance with the AAP recommendations and the WHO recommendations that babies be breastfed exclusively for the first six months. Uh, and then when they return to work, employers um, need to ensure that there's access uh, to lactation facilities mm -hmm. uh, so that when moms are pumping milk, uh, they have a safe, uh, clean space to do so and to store their milk as well. Uh, so there's a lot more we can be doing uh, to support mothers uh, to breastfeed for their own health. Mm -hmm. And then we haven't talked yet about the child health benefits uh, of breastfeeding, but it's incredibly important, as you know, yeah. uh, as a pediatrician. Um, and that ranges from uh, lower infections in terms of ear infections, respiratory infections, a lower risk of sudden infant death syndrome, mm -hmm. which is a leading cause of infant mortality in the U.S. And so breastfeeding really is uh, an essential public health investment. As a pediatrician, I was delighted to hear about the peanuts and now there are new recommendations to, for children who are at high risk for a peanut allergy to introduce peanuts to them even as young as four months. This is uh, 180 from the previous recommendations yes. that were given even just a few years ago. But there are many other important things to know about introducing uh, foods to your young infants. Can you tell me about some of those? Sure. Um, the most important thing is to introduce a variety of foods and textures uh, into an infant's diet. Um, and that means fruits, vegetables, uh, and meats. Meats are actually important mm -hmm. um, from an iron standpoint. Iron is a key uh, brain building mm -hmm. nutrient. And so we wanna make sure that babies are getting enough iron in their diets when they start eating um, uh, solid foods. Mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, one in four uh, one-year-olds in this country, one, one to two-year-olds, mm -hmm. aren't getting enough iron. And, and that is certainly a, a concern and something we need to be uh, watching. Um, the other thing that's, that's important is that parents have the information uh, that they need mm -hmm. uh, to make decisions about what they should be feeding uh, and not feeding their babies. Mm -hmm. um, and this is where I think the dietary guidelines uh, that are currently under development will be incredibly helpful. Mm -hmm. uh, so for the first time ever, the U.S. government is developing a set of dietary guidelines for pregnant women and children under two. And that uh, is, is going to be, I think, a, a really helpful uh, source of information for parents. We at Thousand Days know uh, that about half of parents we've surveyed um, uh, get mixed messages mm -hmm. on what to feed their baby and how to feed their baby. So there definitely is a hunger for mm -hmm. this kind of information. Yeah. Uh, those dietary guidelines are also going to serve as an important reference point for the Women, Infant, and Children program, mm -hmm. uh, which is a program that serves about half the babies born in this country. Uh, and it's a critical program, uh, particularly for families that, that are living in food insecurity. Mm -hmm. And we know that food insecure families uh, the diets tend to be a little bit less uh, nutrient rich. Uh, and so when we think about babies and toddlers living in low income families, uh, we, we wanna make sure that those babies are getting the wide variety of foods uh, that we just talked about mm -hmm. uh, into their diets, diets. to ensure that they also have a strong start to life. Sure, that, that makes sense. So if people want to know more about all of these things, yeah. where, where would you tell them to look? So a great place to start is, of course, the CDC website mm -hmm. uh, and the resources that CDC has on, on breastfeeding and uh, complementary feeding. Mm -hmm. um, we at Thousand Days uh, also have resources mm -hmm. for parents mm -hmm. uh, to better understand what to feed your baby and, and, and how to feed when. your baby <laughs> and when to feed your baby. Um, so you can check out our resources mm -hmm. on our website at thousanddays.org. Um, and then I think beyond that, um, the Women, Infant, and Children program, the mm -hmm. WIC program sure. uh, that serves so many families in the United States, uh, they have breastfeeding counselors and they are a great source of advice for nutrition information uh, and a great resource uh, for, for parents. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, hopefully uh, parents can find the, the mm -hmm. information that they need. And mm -hmm. as I said, the dietary guidelines are coming uh, that are out. forthcoming. That's right. 2020, 2020. Uh, will be, will be a, a Posted terrific, on the web too. Yeah. Yes, yeah. a terrific resource. Yeah. Yeah. Lucy, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, Phoebe. It's a pleasure being here. Yeah. And thank you so much for joining us for Beyond the Data. We'll see you next month.